<laughs> well, well, well. Thank you for tuning in to the Archbishop of Speaking. My name is Archbishop Melvin J. Rivers, and I am the host. On tonight, we're going to start a special series. I've, I've decided that this topic is too rich just to try to cover all of the material in one 30-minute session. And so we're going to start teaching on the wisdom series. Uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding. Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'll be reading out of the Amplified Bible and you can follow it in your Bible. Hear, O children, the instruction of a father and pay attention and be willing to learn so that you may gain understanding and intelligent discernment. For I give you sound doctrine. Do not turn away from my instruction. When I was a son with my father David, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother Bathsheba, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get skillful and godly wisdom. Acquire understanding. Actively seek spiritual discernment. Mature comprehension and logical interpretation. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not turn away from her wisdom and she will guard and protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is get skillful and godly wisdom. It is preeminent. And with all you acquiring, get understanding. Actively seek spiritual discernment, mature comprehension, and logical interpretation. This is the word of God, and it is for the people of God. And somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Well, when we look at this text, we have got to focus on the verse that is preeminent. It says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Solomon called the children together. And Solomon called the children together because he wanted to impart something to them that was imparted to him. When we look at this word wisdom, it is a Strong's word, H2451, Hakma. This wisdom means that you should be skillful in war. This means that you should be wise in your administration. Uh -huh. Somebody will say amen. It means that you should be shrewd in how you engage with the enemy. That when you engage with the enemy, that you are shrewd enough to always make sure that you're not on the losing end, that you're shrewd enough that when you get into agreements, that you don't shortchange yourself, that you understand that you must negotiate contracts where you win and not lose. Some of us say amen. The adjective shrewdness does not mean that you are a devious or manipulative. It means that you are resourceful, especially in matters pertaining to keen awareness and sound judgment. 
Somebody ought to say amen. Solomon called the children and told them that wisdom is the principal thing. This wisdom means that you are prudent in religious affairs, that you know what is of God and what is not of God. Somebody ought to say amen. It means that you have ethics. It means that you have morals. It means that you are wise on the things that you do on a constant basis, that your actions reflect that you have wisdom. Because Solomon called the children together and he told them that wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. But he was not just talking about the Bible. One of the problems that we have in the church is where we don't understand that there are practical things and then there are spiritual things. And we've got to be able to be balanced. Solomon called the children together and told them that while you are young, I want you to get a solid education. Somebody ought to say amen. Solomon called the children and told them that your education is the principal thing. Get education. But in all thy getting, get an understanding. And I looked up that word. That is the Strong's word, H998. Bina, understanding. Understand how things work understand how things fit, understand how to apply the knowledge, the wisdom, the education that you have. Some people have a lot of education, but they don't know how to make it work for them. So Solomon called the children together and Solomon told them that education is the principal thing, get education, but in all thy getting, understand how to make it work for you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let us let us slow it down for a minute because we've got to understand what we are saying. A lot of times in the church, we really don't understand that there are at least three types of wisdom that you have. Sophia, which is the divine mind of God. It is the logos. It is, it is how God put the world together. It is, it is, it is his, his cleverness. Ah, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Listen, so then you have Sophia, which is the divine mind of God, but then you have phronesis, which is practical wisdom. And the problem that we have a lot of times in the church is that we want to preach our way through everything. We want to quote scriptures through everything. But some of us, we did not do what we needed to do in our youth. We did not see education as the principal thing and get a solid, well-rounded education. That we wouldn't have to quote scriptures, but we would have the practical wisdom, the phronesis, to know how to intuitively handle those things that baffle us, that don't have it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to slow it down a little bit more. You got to understand that, that, uh, when we talk about accreditation in as far as uh, college education, they will only accreditate your program if you provide a well-rounded education. Do you educate them on the arts? Do you educate them in science, in literature, in music, geography? chemistry. 
Do you give them a well-rounded education in the social sciences? Do you prepare them that when they walk into a room filled with people that they just wouldn't have to always quote scriptures, but they can continue? They can they can continue and participate in conversation in the other disciplines, in the other genres. You've got to understand that you need a well-rounded education to be effective in the practical areas of life. Somebody ought to say, man, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about project management? What about when we have services in the church? And we need to know how to put these things on. We need to know how to engage. We need to know how to engage with the world. Do we understand marketing? Do we understand social media? See, what we have got to understand is that we've been skewed to one side. Listen. I told you that three types of wisdom. We talked about Sophia, we talked about Phronesis, but now let's talk about Sunesis. And Sunesis is where you take the practical education that you achieve and you take the logo Sophia, the divine mind of God, and you put it together and it gives you the favor of God. It gives you a competitive edge. It allows you to excel because ethically and morally and practically you are the best person for the job. You not only know how to do the job, but you also know how to relate with people and how to manage them effectively. Somebody ought to say amen. What about television production? And right now, when when it comes to the pandemic, when it comes to the fact that, that uh, we've been pushed out into the community where we have to get our message out. Do you understand how to set up this system in different places besides the church? Set it up in the house. Set it up in your office. Do you have the practical wisdom in how to do it? So what we've got to understand when we talk about wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding. You have got to understand that if the only wisdom that you have is quoting scriptures, then you're not going to really be the best candidate for some of these jobs. You're not really going to be that effective out in the world in the marketplace. How can we send you out into the world when you see the world as a rival and when you see the world as a hostile environment because you don't know how to deal with them and how to engage with them? Somebody ought to say, Solomon called the children and he told them, Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, but in all thy getting, get understanding. Somebody will say amen. Listen, listen, listen. You've got to remember that when Solomon called the children, uh, they didn't really have a printed Bible. They had uh, the Pentateuch. Uh, they had Torah. But you got to understand that it wasn't really readily available to everyone. So the wisdom that he was talking about, he was talking about skills in war, wisdom in administration, shrewdness, prudence, ethics, religion. Solomon told them you have to be well-rounded. Your ministry starts at home. 
When Solomon called the children, we have to understand that the bishop must rule his own house well. Somebody ought to say amen. First, First Timothy 3, 4 through 5. You have got to understand that the children of godly wisdom and instruction has advantages. Yes, yes. When you are surrounded by wise counsel, you should be getting important information that allows you to excel because you are one step ahead. You can see things before they materialize. You already know how this works and the probability of how it ends. And so you can conduct yourself appropriately to make sure that you are positioned for success. There are blessings handed down through wise counsel. There are generational blessings of instruction. Think about the parents that are owners of companies that they teach the children at a very early age about the business and how to handle the business and, and how to think and how to manage the business. And they gain very important information and insight that they probably wouldn't really get in a university or in a business school. Now, once they go to school or uh, complete their degree, they will be reminded of those situations and circumstances where their parents taught them exactly what to do and taught them how to handle themselves. And we cannot minimize this education. See, one of the problems that we have is those that have the education will not talk against the education, but those without the education will always talk against the education. You know why? Because they did not have the discipline to complete their education. Solomon called the children and told them that I want you to have discipline to complete the disciplines. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and the real truth of the matter is David watched over Solomon to make sure that he didn't stray too far that he did his homework, that he saw education as important. And he made such an impression on Solomon that, that when God asked him what did he want, he told the Lord that he wanted wisdom and an understanding heart. Somebody ought to say amen. Get knowledge and grace while you are young. Get skillful and practical wisdom. Get a well-informed education. All that would receive should come as a little child. See, what we've got to understand when we talk about wisdom is the first thing that you need to recognize is that you need to come with a teachable spirit, with a white slit. Let your prejudice aside and recognize that you are getting valuable information. Somebody ought to say amen. You're getting information that's going to save your life. You're getting information that's going to take you higher. You're getting information that's going to cause you to excel. And what we have got to understand and what we've got to let the children know, stand down. We are trying to impart blessings to you. We're trying to get you ready. We're trying to set you up for success. But you got to have a teachable spirit. You've got to humble yourself as a little child. And we need to see our instructors as heavenly ambassadors 
of our Heavenly Father. Somebody ought to say amen. We should see our teachers as our fathers with authority and affection. See, one of the things that we have to do, and one of the things that we have to watch when we look at what Solomon did, when Solomon called the children, he spoke to them tenderly. He engaged with them. He wanted them to know that he was their father, that he loved them, loved them dearly, that he tenderly cared about them, and that he affectionately wanted to impart something that would be a blessing to them. It's not what we say to the children as much as how we say it. We've got to make sure that the children know that we love them, that we are watching out for them, that we are giving them godly instruction and wisdom that's going to be a blessing to their life. And he that wins souls is wise. So we've got to understand, you know what, it brings into play uh, uh, leadership. It brings into play organizational behavior. It brings into play management. See, one of the things that we have to understand when it comes to wisdom is that we need to use more than scripture. We need to know how to do things. We need to understand how things work. We need to understand how to engage with people and how to work with people and how to use our education to give us the competitive age, to, uh, the competitive edge, to get the favor of God through our practical and skillful wisdom and our moral and ethical conduct that is dictated by the word of God. Some of them say, man, see, sometimes we really don't understand how to apply the scriptures. We hear the scriptures, but we don't even understand the spirit and how we should engage with people. There's a lot of people that, that know scripture, but they offend people. They know scripture, but they don't know how to work with people. They know scripture, but they don't understand the delivery. They don't understand how how to engage with people, how to do the very things that they want to do. And sometimes we have to teach people how to handle that sword, how to handle the Word of God. We should not use the Word of God to tear people down. We should not use the Word of God to just to chastise people. We should use the Word of God to exhort, uplift, motivate, encourage people to make the right decisions. And that's what Solomon did with the children. Solomon wanted them to know that he wanted them to pay attention to the words that were coming from his mouth. And God wants us to pay attention to the word of God. Solomon wanted the children to apprehend the information, to take possession of the information that he was giving them. And God wants us to apprehend what the word of God is saying, to take possession of the word of God, to understand the apprehension of the word and the application 
of the word. Somebody ought to say amen. Listen, the application of the word of God is because we have paid attention to the word of God and now we can apply the word of God. Somebody ought to say amen. Let all your prejudices be laid aside and the mind be as clear so that when you're in church, that you're listening, you're listening to the word of God. You, 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 you're not being distracted by sidebar conversation that, 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 that there's nothing more important than the word of God. That God has your full attention and that you are listening. You are not only listening for the Logos word, but you're listen, listening for the Rhema word that is especially for you. We must look as our teachers, as our fathers that love us and seek our welfare. And though the instruction corrects us, we have got to welcome it with joy. Somebody don't say amen. Listen, listen, listen. Here's what I want you to know. I want you to know and understand that although the word of God cuts to the intent of the heart, it is a good cut. It is a right cut. It is where we find out the secret plans of the enemy. It is where we find out what the enemy is trying to do, how he's trying to trick us. And what we've got to understand that when we, if we're really wise, if we're really walking in wisdom, if we really have any understanding of the scriptures, we would understand that we need to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross for the remission of our sins, that he was that he rose on the third day with all power and all authority and we have got to come to the place where we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 